Hi, this is James from Reggie and the Full Effect, and you're watching 8747 Productions. What's up, everybody? Big Brian here, 8747 Productions. We're kicking with James DeWeese of Reggie and the Full Effect. Hello. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had a Full Effect album out, so you went on tour with My Chemical Romance, and then you got off tour and got bored. Is that... Well, when we were in uh, recording the last record in Los Angeles, um, I was living across the street from the recording studio, so I had lots of free time, and I would be at the studio, and I started writing like the chicken song that's on the new record, and uh, the song Guerrera that's on the new record, and then started writing songs about how much I didn't like living in North Hollywood, and it was like, oh, well, I've got kind of almost a whole Reggie record here, so right when MCR decided to call it quits, it was like, well, I've got all these songs, I might as well put out a Reggie record. All right, well, that's cool. So you... I mean, we were talking off camera. You did a lot of it yourself and sent it off. What, um, you know, when you record all this stuff on your own and then send it off, what do you have to trust the guy to make it sound better? Well, it's, it's like um, taking like a, a jigsaw puzzle and putting together like three fourths of it. And then, but like they're big pieces. Like, so you, uh, like, you know, say the jigsaw puzzle's all blue or something. Right. And you send all him everything where it's like all you have to do is attach these three blue pieces so it's pretty easy it's like lining everything up in pro tools and just making sure that things are synced and then making sure it sounds good cool man so let's talk about word i mean you said you came up with the ideas sitting in you know in, across street from the studio but i don't know some of your music is just outright hilarious well, and, thank you. is it just because it's real life is that where the inspiration comes from or yeah pretty where... much it, it's 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 i write stuff about things that happen to me like in everyday life and things that i find funny which is why a lot of you know i don't know i'm told that my sense of humor is pretty good and uh it's just stuff that you know like observations that i make like you know people at fuck a drugstore or people at a bar or people at the mall or like, you know, my interaction with delivery guys or anything like that. I mean, the, the song stuff comes from everywhere. Cool. You have a reoccurring, you know, a couple of reoccurring characters, but one of my favorite that always shows up is Klaus. Where did you find the inspiration for this? That was actually, I was trying, there was this Christian band, which, you know, it's weird because it's Klaus common denominator doesn't seem like a christian band but uh so we were having coffee and this friend of mine was trying to come up with band names and so on a piece of paper i was just writing out whatever was coming to my head and common denominator came out and uh he was like nah I'm not into that math stuff and i was like okay well and then um i held on to that piece of paper and then one morning on a dare with uh one of the other members of coalesce was that i could write and record a song and play all the instruments and be done in like 10 minutes. Okay. And so I went to the basement with a four track recorder and came up 10 minutes later. And for some reason, when I was doing the vocals, <laughs> the first thing that came out of my mouth was hello Americans. This is Klaus <laughs> from common denominator. <laughs> and it's been there ever since. I have no idea why Klaus, but cause I don't even think Klaus is a fin Finnish name. Right. right. So, no, I, I mean, my friend Greg introduced me to Reggie and the Full Effect years ago, and I remember just sitting in his car going, "Is it, this is the same band? Like, this is not a mixtape." He's like, "No, oh, same band." So you have, you know, a great eclectic mind, and I think you're so underappreciated for what you do musically oh, because well, I, I think that that that'll come after I die. <laughs> be one of the like, you know, Picasso. It would like be like this, this this team of people that would be like, oh, we need to make a documentary about the life of James Deweese and how fucking crazy it was. <laughs> sure, I'm just kidding. No, but, uh, no you know, I, don't, I don't I don't feel underappreciated. I'm just happy to be able to make music and you know pay my bills and and do all the things that I've done with music for so long. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's. 13 year old me like if time machines ever get invented i can go back and be like just keep doing it yeah stay so off drugs wouldn't change wouldn't change a thing um uh, maybe some things but i change a couple things but for the most part no nothing with the music right so and you've been in a lot of bands and you've played in a lot of different genres and you know a lot of people just like pigeonhole themselves like i'm only gonna play one genre but you kind of are the rebellion against that. What's it like, you know, playing in all sorts of different bands throughout your career and always changing? It's just music, you know? It's, it's I enjoy music and I enjoy so many different styles and I also enjoy playing with so many different musicians, you know? Everybody's different and 
to me, it's the experience that you get from playing with another musician. It's also the experience you get trying to write a song that's out of, you know, like the norm for, say, like, you know, the Get Up Kids are an emo band or Reggie's like an electronic emo band or Coalesce is a hardcore band and just kind of try to kind of, I don't know, extend the boundaries a little bit. Never so far to alienate anybody, but just that's why there's on like Reggie record, like you said, like there's all these different types of genres. Right, right. It's like, I didn't want to start out and just be this one thing. I wanted it to be all these things at once right. so that people could... That's me. Sorry. That's all right. I was like, hey, this uh, Hold on. I don't know where... There it is. Um, Cell phones, right? <laughs> but uh, so that it could be something where, you know, the longer it continued on and continued on, people would just know like, oh, it's Reggie. So there's going to be all this different stuff on it. Cool. Yeah. And I... I love what I've heard on the album. I think that it's, you know, like, I, I, I always get a good kick when I finally get into listening to the lyrics. Uh, I, I, I'm an engineer, so I always love to listen through and kind of hear what you're layering, stacking on top of stuff. But when you get down to it, this new Reggie and the Full Effect album is Reggie and the Full Effect. It's kind of what you're looking for when you go for Reggie and the Full Effect. You yeah, that's just the point new of, stories. of being the Full Effect is, like, you get this all-encompassing pile of crap thrown into your ears all right well cool well you know thanks for coming out uh, utah is kind of a funny little tour stop so thanks oh, for showing though. up and it's gorgeous here so um you know it i i teach at a couple of universities i teach audio engineering and if you could just if you had any advice for people that are coming up trying to be you know edm producers or trying to create music and you know engineer stuff what would you t- say to people i'd say um you know practice as much as possible practice recording you know with edm stuff it's really i mean experiment as much as you can because you know the 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 waveforms are always changing and you can do anything with that stuff it's like you know sky's the limit um but it also is be able to dedicate the time that don't think it's going to come overnight like yeah, sometimes the EDM beats are pretty simple, but when you really crack down to like the layers in the recording, you know, it's it takes a lot of time to get that way and it takes a lot of time to really hone like the sound that you're looking for. Right. And, you know, it's really it just, you know, be be dedicated to it. If you really want to do it, just be dedicated to it. Right. First time in the studio versus the current times you've been in the studio, what what is one of the biggest things you've learned along the way? Um I don't know. I guess when you're in the studio, when Reggie's in the studio, it's still really silly and weird. Mm -hmm. But uh, when like, you know, a thing I could say, like as far as band recording goes, um, you know, if you're on a budget, go in prepared. Right. And either way you look at it, you should be on a budget. So you should go in prepared. Right. Um, You know, it's, it's something that, I don't know. Don't f- never force anything because you can always tell when stuff's forced. Right. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, thank like you very said, much. Thanks for coming through Salt Lake and it's Big Brian eight seven four seven Productions. We'll see you guys next time.